Okay, let's talk about a type of problem that you're definitely going to see in algebra. So you're going to need to know how to solve a problem like this if you want to pass algebra, especially with an excellent grade. So let's see what's going on here. Um, looks like we have a rectangle. Okay, we got some information here, and uh, we're told that the area is 12 units uh, squared. Okay, so we don't have this is inches or centimeters. It's just 12. And uh, the problem here is that we want to actually find uh, the length and the width, okay? So that's what we want to do. So instead of 2x and 2x plus 4, we want to find the actual measurements of the dimensions of this rectangle, okay? So here, again, is a rectangle. We have 2x here, 2x plus 4 here, and the area is 12. Uh, this is enough information for you to be able to determine the actual dimensions of this rectangle. So... If you think you can do this, go ahead and pause the video. Uh, it's probably take you about a minute to do. Put your answer uh, answers into the comment section, and then we'll go ahead and compare notes. But I'm going to get into uh, all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, if you are having a difficult time with math, maybe you don't think you're good at math. Maybe you failed math before in the past. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't have to be that way. So if you're currently struggling in math, maybe you don't uh, feel like you're getting enough math instruction or you're uh, not connecting with your teacher's teaching style, whatever the case might be, I've been teaching math for decades. I don't even like to think of myself as teaching math as more of a, uh, as explaining uh, math in very, very clear and understandable bite-sized pieces so anybody and everybody can learn this stuff. So if you're, if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, I can definitely help you succeed in mathematics. Now, um, if you're preparing for any test that has a math section on it, so I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, CLIP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, I could definitely help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you absolutely must check out my homeschool math courses. Uh, we were just uh, uh, voted number one. Uh, winner at a big um, uh, survey uh, from a big national magazine for uh, middle and high school mathematics, number one homeschool program. So you definitely want to check out our program. Now, if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of uh, this video as well. But if you really want great grades in math, you must learn how to take great math notes. Okay, this is the little secret about math that a lot of people just kind of dismiss. They're like, yeah, I don't need to take notes. Yes, you absolutely need to take excellent notes to be great in mathematics. Okay, so if you want a little bit more time to work on this problem, go ahead and feel free to pause the video. But I'm going to go ahead and get into it now. And I'm going to give you a bit of a hint. Okay, so we know that the area is 12. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, the area of a rectangle is going to be the length times the width. So the area is equal to the length times the width. So what we have here is this is the length and this is the width. So if we multiply this times this, okay, that is the area. This times this is the area. We have the area. So I'm gonna, I should plug in this amount right here where the area is at. And then the length, I could plug in this, this 2x plus 4. And the width is 2x. Okay, so I could set up a nice equation. So this is what you want to do. You want to set up a nice equation, then you want to solve, and then you want to interpret uh, the results. Okay, so I pretty much just kind of gave you a um, game plan on how to solve this problem. Okay, now if you understand what I just said, then pause the video, and you should try to do this yourself before you see me actually do the, um, uh, the work. Remember, it's a huge difference between uh, watching me do math and then having you practice math, okay? Just watching me do math successfully, you know, like, okay, yeah, I know, I see what he's doing. That's not, you're not really retaining the information. You need to practice this stuff. So let's get into the actual solution now. Okay, so as I said, we have the area is equal to 12. So I multiply this times this, I'm going to get the area of 12. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we got our width, 2x, times our length, which is 2x plus 4, and that's going to be equal to our area, which is 12. So that's the first thing you want to do in any kind of algebra problem is to try to um, create an equation. Okay, so here, uh, of course, it's uh, pretty helpful to know that the area is equal to the length times the width. So again, you're going to have to know 
um, uh, the formula for the area of a rectangle, and hopefully you remember that, but uh, let's go ahead and continue with the problem. So we have 2x times 2x plus 4 is equal to 12. Well, at this point, you're going to need to know how to solve an equation like this. So what type of an equation is this? Hopefully you can see we're, we're um, getting an x squared over here. So this is actually a quadratic equation. All right, so you're going you're to need to know how to solve a quadratic equation. So let's go through it. So we're going to have 2x times 2x gives us a 4x squared. 2x times this 4 gives us an 8x. And then we have 12. Now, notice that uh, 4 is a factor of each one of these numbers. So I can literally just divide uh, each one of the terms of this quadratic uh, equation by 4. And you always want to do that just to simplify your terms. So this will uh, bring this down to x squared. This is 2x, and then this would be 3. So this equation here okay, is equivalent to this equation. Right? Just uh, remember, whatever you do, um, when we're dealing with an equation in algebra, if you divide both sides of the equation by this, uh, the same number, you're not going to break the equation. So remember, that's the kind of the uh, main uh, fundamental concepts of equation solving in algebra. You can do whatever you want uh, to an equation uh, with numbers as long as you do it equally to everything in the equation. So just us dividing by 4 here doesn't change anything, all right? So uh, I'd rather deal with this, x squared plus 2x is equal to 3, than 4x squared plus 8x is equal to 12. Okay, now, but by the way, if you just uh, didn't do that step, and you were just, okay, I'm just going to work with 4x squared plus 8x is equal to 12, you would still get the right answer. But when you can simplify, you should try to do that. just makes the problem a little bit easier. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. We have x squared plus 2x is equal to 3. So here I'm going to have to set this equation equal to 0. This is how you solve a quadratic equation. So I'm left with x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. So when you're dealing with a quadratic trinomial like this one, one of the first things you always want to try to do is factor. All right, now sometimes you can factor. If you cannot factor this, and, and you can see here that we were able to factor it, but if we could not factor, then we would have to go to the quadratic formula. But luckily for us, we can factor this. So x squared plus 2x minus 3, when you factor that, it's going to be x plus 3 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, if you don't know how um, I factor this trinomial down to this, then you need to work on your factoring. Factoring is hugely important in algebra. Matter of fact, if you don't know how to factor, you will literally not be able to pass algebra. Okay, so what do we do here? So what you're going to do is you're going to set each factor uh, equal to zero and solve. So let me just write that step in just uh, to show those of you out there that are not following this work. So we have this times this is equal to zero. So if I have something times something else and that's equal to zero, then one or both of these things must be equal to zero. That's the only way we can get uh, two things being multiplied by one, one another to be equal to zero. That's called the zero pr uh, product property. So we're going to set each factor equal to zero. When I solve, I get x plus 3 is equal to zero. So this is uh, x is equal to negative 3. Then x minus 1, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is equal to zero. I get x is equal to 1. Okay, so let's take a look at our answers here. I got a negative answer and I got a positive answer. So they're like, hmm, okay, which one is going to be right? Well, uh, the only answer that's going to work here is a positive 1, okay? Because if you look here, x is equal to negative 3. If I allowed x to be equal to negative 3, and this, right, this side right here is 2x, well, I would go, okay, 2x is equal to negative 3, so that's 2 times negative 3. This is negative 6. So we don't want uh, our lengths to be, like, negative. Although, technically, it would still be a solution for the area. Uh, you don't want to uh, think of uh, dimensions for a rectangle to be negative. So if you see an, uh, a value that's going to cause a negative length or width or dimension, just throw that out and keep the one that... Uh, is going to be positive. So we'll keep x is equal to 1 as the solution. And let's just go ahead and check this here and see if we did this correctly. So 2x is 2 times 1. x is equal to 1. So this side would be 2. Okay, so there's 2 there. And then 2x plus 4, if x is 1, 
I'm going to have what? 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. So the length would be 6. The width would be 2. And if I wanted to find the area, I would just multiply 6 times 2. And what is the answer? It is 12. Okay, and of course, that is exactly what we were told up here. Okay. All right, so if you got this right all the way through and you understood everything, that's very, very good. Matter of fact, you definitely earned a good old 1981 Mohawk, okay? Now, that was a long time ago, but uh, for those of you um, who want to know about history and weren't around in the 80s, people actually wore their hair like that, and they thought they were pretty cool. I wasn't one of them, but uh, it was pretty common, and, you know, it was pretty impressive, just like your ability to do this prompt. So there you go. There's a 1981 uh, Mohawk for you. Let's throw in A+, plus, a 100%. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you a few stars so you feel extra special today. So nice, uh, nice job, okay? This type of prompt, this is like very classic algebra, right? This is, uh, you know, stuff you're definitely going to see. Um, especially in, you know, when you study uh, quadratic equations. So just remember, in algebra, you're going to do a decent amount of um, problems that involve some sort of geometric figure. So you're going to need to know uh, area, volume, you know, formulas for basic figures. So rectangles, triangles, circles, things like that should be committed to your long-term memory. Okay, so if this little video, um, you know, was helpful in some small way, go ahead and help me out by smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for uh, 10 plus years. I have over a thousand videos from basic, uh, basic math to advanced math by calculus and everything in between. So please take advantage of my content if you like my teaching style. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.